I got started in judo when I was five years old. I grew up watching my dad go to judo and his love and passion for the sport just made me want to do it more and I couldn't wait to start. So once I got into it, my mom always says like the second she saw me do judo, she was like, this is it. This is what she's gonna do. My mom says I get my talent from my dad, but I get like my passion and drive from her. My mom's an extremely ambitious woman. The one thing my parents didn't do to me was put pressure to do anything else. They let me follow my Olympic dream. It's so easy to say, go to university, get your degree, do this, do this. Like there's so many, like you have your parents, your teachers, like everyone's coming at you. And I've been able to like stick to my plan, like my five-year-old self. Like I've just had that journey and I haven't strayed from it, which is I find like thinking back now, pretty unbelievable with all the influences coming at me. I've been able to stick to that career path, my passion, my love. And that's why I think I'm so successful is because I love what I do. And going to the 2012 games, I had to remind myself because there's so much pressure and stress and you want to win so badly, you have to remember why you're doing it. For me, it's 100% mental. It's every day getting up in the morning, knowing you're going to have to train your guts out and make sure you're not only training hard, but training smart so you're getting better. And then, then there's the performance aspect, making sure that everything you've done to prepare is able and ready to go and don't let the stress get to you or the outside influences because something always crazy happens. Like nothing is ever, you can plan the fight, the day, the perfect day, but something's always coming at you. And you gotta be able to brush it off your shoulders and fight regardless of your situation. And uh, this journey really makes you dig deep and find out why you're doing this. And uh, everyone said the Olympic Games would be like no other fight you fought before. And until I went there and I walked into the Olympic Village and the quote everywhere was inspire a generation. And I was a generation. I was a little girl sitting at home watching the Olympic Games. And next thing I know, I'm walking there, stepping onto the mat. I don't know who's watching, which little girl's watching. And for the rest of my life, people will know me as an Olympian, this title. And they will forever ask me about the Olympic Games. So going there, I made sure it better be a damn good story. Because it's not always easy. We're not always doing exactly what we want to do all the time. I don't wake up every morning and be like, oh, I can't wait to fight this girl or this guy or get thrown into the mats or get punched in the face or kicked in the leg. Like those days aren't fun, but when you think about the Olympic Games and what it means, the Olympic Games represents world peace to me. Walking out the Olympics at the opening ceremonies is my favorite part. All those nations, the world, that city is vibrating on another level when you're there. Judo allows you to travel the world. And that was, once you get the travel bug, I'm sure people who travel just know, like you just can't stop. You get addicted to seeing new places and meeting new people. A lot of times, like I'm not in a team sport, I'm out there alone. And you can think your coach is doing it for you and your parents and everyone's pushing you, but at the end of the day, it's only you out there. So you gotta trust yourself. And that's when I, that, that was the game changer for me. I went from barely cracking the top 14 in the world to eight months later being number one in the world. And it wasn't because I was doing more judo or training harder. Everything was the same. It was a mental switch. It was confidence that got me to the top.